Constantine shouldered his las rifle. His bayonet shimmered in the unnatural green glow of the putrid fog that hid the world's setting sun. He stood alongside his regiment at the Rock Creek battlements. They too steeled themselves for another bloody battle. The hordes would be upon them soon. The plague had started a month ago. The hive planet of Flayton was slow to react. At first, the governor had censored all reports of a spreading pox. Rumors of a plague so virulent it could spread by so much as hearing the wails of the infected. He chalked it up to propaganda disseminated by a rival to undermine his authority. His foolishness cost him. It had cost all of Flayton. Constantine cursed his name. The governor was one of the lucky ones. He at least had the dignity of death at the end of Commissar Ulrich's bolt pistol. Others suffered a far worse fate. Company ready? Commissar Ulrich barked. Constantine adjusted his makeshift earplugs. He could barely hear the order. Yet if he loosened the bits of cloth he had tied in his ear too much, he risked becoming one of them. A gibbering, slathering, grotesque zombie. Even through his ramshackle protection, he could hear them miles away in the distance. It was a low roar of laughter. Screams, coughs and wheezes. Worst of all was the singing. Through rotten vocal cords and pus-filled lungs, the horde sung the same tune over and over again. The Song of the Damned. Join our song. Sing along. Celebrate our sickness. Through our bile, we will smile. One and all bear witness. Constantine spat as he tried to get the lyrics out of his head. It was so simple and calming, like a child's lullaby. But he knew what that damned song could do. He'd heard it on the lips of friends, strangers, even lovers as they fell into an incurable madness. Oh, how he wished he could forget their putrid transformations. When Constantine joined the guard, he was told about such a disease. The Imperium called it the Walking Pox. Manuals described the pox walk as it created, smiling plague zombies with horns and protrusions all around their bodies. It did not do justice to the true horror of the plague. Constantine swore if he ever got off Flayton he would update the pamphlets. He distracted himself from the plague song by reviewing the course of the infection in his mind. It started with pustules, green and itchy. Sometimes these burst and spread the sickness then confusion set in. The infected acted delirious, not knowing where they were or how they got there. Soon after came sepsis. The victim's body went into shock as the virus overwhelmed them. Then, calcification. Their very bones sprouted from their skins in monstrous horns. Hands mutated into savage claws incapable of complex manipulation. About all they could do now was hold a blunt object and swing. Muscular degeneration was next. The infected's facial muscles permanently contracted into a sickening smile as their lips rotted away. A kind of rigor mortis set in, turning their gait into little more than a hobble and making them more resilient to blunt force trauma. Finally, the near-dead victim rose. The only words coming from their desiccated throats were the plague song. They used it to find other infected, drawn to the tune as they formed massive hordes. Constantine shuddered. He remembered when his own mother had turned. She attacked him savagely, all while chanting that damn song. He would never forget the terrified look in her eyes. He swore he saw her somewhere in there, begging for deliverance. But she smiled at him like a raving animal, hungry for his flesh. He'd never forgive himself for putting a lasbolt through her skull. Still, her memory was enough to keep him sane. The same could not be said for several of his comrades. The horde was in visual distance now, kicking up dust as they ambled across the ash wastes. A few guardsmen panicked ripping their earplugs out and hurling themselves from the battlements in maddened exultation. Ulrich and the company cut them down. 
company! Hold! Ulrich ordered. The horde was getting closer, only around a thousand yards from the perimeter defenses. The basalt citadel stood at the edge of the hive city, rising several hundred feet into the air. It stood over the ash wastes like a stalwart guardian. Three terraces of defenses were staggered across its face, with even more gun batteries, moats, and trenches guarding its rockcrete base. Constantine stood guard on the lowest terrace, a mere fifty feet above the plain. Commissar Ulrich was with him. He was giving orders on an ornate golden pedestal at its center. Behind them stood the hive city Flayton. It was the world's capital as well as its namesake. Now a shell of its former self, its millions of inhabitants had dwindled to a hundred thousand after the culling. If the citadel fell, the city fell, and with it, the last free bastion on the planet. Company! Fire! The order finally came. The horde was only 300 yards away now, and had broken into what passed as a run. A tide of pox walkers trampled over one another, laughing with glee as they crushed their comrades underfoot. Heavy bolters opened up. Line after line of infected exploded into rancid giblets. But they kept coming. Constantine began shooting, picking out targets as they grew closer and closer to the outer defenses. Finally, the horde slammed into the first trench. Guardsmen frantically lashed out with bayonets as they were buried in a mass of rotting bodies. Constantine saw men torn limb from limb as the pox walkers continued their incessant song. Explosions dotted the line. In their last acts, guardsmen had pulled the pins on their grenades, sacrificing themselves to take out as many of the former citizens of Flayton as they could. Emperor, have mercy on them. Constantine prayed. Flamers! To the line! Commissar Ulrich could barely be heard over the sounds of battle and chanting. As pox walkers hacked through the outer trench, flamethrower teams rushed into position. The survivors of the first trench pulled back before the flamers unleashed their Prometheum. Zombies and the clouds of putrid gas that hung around them ignited with a roar of fire. Flaming pox walkers flailed wildly as they were incinerated. For a moment, the horde was pushed back. That was until the bolt fire started. The first hit the Prometheum tank of a flamer. The guardsmen caught and the blast screamed as they were cooked alive. More rounds screamed towards the citadel as panicked guardsmen faltered. Pox walkers couldn't shoot. What was happening? Who was this unseen enemy? Out of the mist from behind the horde arose a sight for Constantine's sore eyes. Hulking yellow armored marines. Astartes. The Emperor's angels had answered their prayers. Imperial fists by the looks of them. He could barely make out their livery as they advanced. He wanted to weep with joy. Thank the throne, said Ulrich. He picked up his vox. Captain, signal the Astartes to hold their shooting. We can't have more friendly fire incidents. Provide cover while they take up defensive positions. Down below, the captain nodded in acknowledgement before a bolt took off his head. Constantine's elation turned to pure terror as he realized the horror of the situation. As guardsmen focused on the mindless zombies, their supposed saviors cut them to pieces. Rusted blades and blunted axes hacked into unsuspecting troopers. These were not loyalists. By the time Commissar Ulrich had realized his mistake, the entire perimeter defense had collapsed. Damn it! Do not let them onto the battlements! That is an order! Ulrich screamed, voice cracking in fear. Constantine got a good look at the traitor marines as they scaled the wall atop their gibbering cannon fodder. They were not the regal and noble warriors he had heard about in legends. They were disgusting mutants caked in disease and flies. Tentacles and horns erupted from their armor. Some had all too many eyes while others were cyclopean. Still others had the compound eyes of an insect. Constantine recoiled as one gazed upon him, laughing as he dug his claws into the rockcrete. I'm coming, little one. He hissed in glee, spittle and slime drooling from a tongue that was altogether way too large for its maw. Constantine shot him 
but the last bolt ricocheted harmlessly off. The creature continued its ascent. Constantine shot again, this time severing one of the beast's many tentacles. Green and black ichor spewed from the wound, but the space marine shrugged it off. It was almost upon him now, and as Constantine let loose another shot, the marine grabbed the barrel of the gun. The lasbolt careened harmlessly into the fog. Constantine watched as his painstakingly maintained lasgun rusted away before his eyes. He shrieked and let go, falling back onto the battlement. The scene around him was carnage. Zombies swarmed a man to his right, while Uruk was impaled by a marine to his left. Everywhere guardsmen were falling, some simply died, others cracked and transformed into poxwalkers themselves. Their eyes bulged in fear as a horrific smile was painted across their faces. Your tenacity is impressive, little one, a voice gurgled. Constantine looked at the plague marine before him. The giant held the remnants of his las gun before blowing it away into red-brown dust. Grandfather might have use for you yet. No, no, I'll never join you, Constantine cried. He fumbled through his munitions pouch before grasping onto a grenade. He pulled the pin and said a prayer. The marine laughed and hoisted him up by his neck. Slimy tentacles wriggled around the grenade in Constantine's hand as it too decayed into nothingness. I... Not little one, the marine pouted. It sounded as if a swarm of insects were talking in unison. Perhaps if you heard our song, you'd change your mind. I am told it has put smiles on many faces. The marine plucked the plugs from Constantine's ears. Constantine closed his eyes and screamed as the plague song echoed in his soul. The brute let out a hearty laugh filled with phlegm. Join our song. Sing along. Celebrate our sickness. Through our bile, we will smile. One and all bear witness. Constantine didn't even realize he was mouthing along. Desperately, he clawed at his ears. Verdant boils erupted from his body. His mind begged for an end as he lost touch with reality. His body grew hot as it tried in vain to fight the infection. His shoulder blade erupted through his skin. His fingernails fell out as his bones tore through his phalanges, becoming sharp and deadly. His toes fused before ending in horrific hoof-like appendages. His skull cracked and twisted, a horn appearing from the hair on his balding scalp. His body grew stiff, muscles rippled with power and bloated. He attempted to keep his mouth closed, but he couldn't stop from singing the lullaby. Full-throated, he shouted it. His facial muscles atrophied and paralyzed as he finished his transformation into an accursed poxwalker. All that was left was a large, toothy smile. The plague marine set the new zombie down. The creature that was Constantine opened its eyes. Surprisingly, horrifyingly, he could see everything clearly. He could feel everything. But he had no control over his body, except for his eyes. The body continued chanting. His eyes darted everywhere, looking for any kind of salvation. Finally, they landed on the plague marine that had turned him into this wretched thing. He was still laughing a horrible mocking laugh. <laughs> you take to Nurgle's gifts well, little one. Now, come, revel in our destruction of your home. The body obeyed, shambling towards the inside of the citadel and the doomed city beyond. Inside its smiling skull, Constantine screamed. <laughs>